there's a time we'll call our own Living free in harmony and majesty Take me home, take me home Take me home, take me home The wilderness is a funny sort of place it can be all quiet and peaceful like in the morning, but there's plenty more to it than meets the eye. And the first one who's going to find that out is a greenhorn. Adams could tell you about that. Before he got himself settled in with Ben and learned how to survive, he went through it all. And then some. But I'll say this. He weren't never as green as that fellow we run into one autumn up in the mountains. Now there was a galoot who was a plum flat out danger to himself and Everybody else, too. Well, I'm surprised we're all still alive today. Good morning, Joshua. Oh. I hope you're enjoying your rest, Ben. Really does my heart good to see you so comfortable. Oh. Can't recommend it from my back, though. Ah, but my heart feels great. You know, Joshua, we gotta find another place for Ben to sleep. Had a few nights of sleeping on that floor, but I don't think I'm ever gonna stand up straight again. Morning, Gertrude. tree gives me an idea. I guess I could build him a lean to. A little shelter of his own. He'd be more comfortable. And I know I'd be more comfortable. Wish Jack was here. With this help, I could get there a lot faster. Something's funny. Don't it feel funny to you, number seven? That's peculiar. The hackles on my neck is a razor. Do you get the feeling that somebody's got their eye on us? <laughs> well, I can't help it if you ain't sensitive. I know I'm not crazy. I tell you, I feel something. Oh. Do you reckon there could be somebody up there? Yeah. You're right, that's a fool notion. Wouldn't be anybody up there except maybe a longhorn sheep. <laughs> or a bounty hunter looking for the price on Adam's head. You want a drink? Better get one. I say there. Howdy. Marvelous day, isn't it? Just right. For go ah! <laughs> you got your boots a little wet there, young fella. <laughs> Where are you from anyways? You lost from a hunting party? Oh, I'm not lost. No, indeed. I'm on my own. Quite alone. And doing rather well, if I say so myself. Well, in that case, you know where you are and how to get back to where you come from. Wherever that is. Well, nice meeting up with you. I reckon. Yes, it was. I, I mean, it is. Wait. You don't mind if I follow along, do you? It's company, you know. So alone out here. Can't stop you from following, I guess.
You all right? I'll be fine. It's just asthma. Chronic case. There. You see? If you're smart, you'll be going home. Now. Before you get yourself killed. One of them, Sam. You see? I mean... Uh, I can't. I'm coming. You don't have to slow down for me. I'm right behind you. Oh, I ain't slowing down. I'm stopping. go on further, you know. Suit yourself. I'm making camp right here for the night. Oh. Well, looks like a good place for it. What would you know about that? I've studied these things. <laughs> Who ever heard of studying campsites? The Outdoor Life by Leffingwell. Greatest book ever published. Has everything in it. How to blaze new trails. How to survive under any circumstances. How to make the wilderness your natural home. Does it tell you anything in that backwoods Bible about collecting wood for a fire? <laughs> you just leave the fire to me, old man. Oh, man. Let's see. Firewood. Well, it wasn't so hard to find. I say, old man, there doesn't seem to be much wood about. Mm -hmm. I sort of uh, stumbled onto this. I hope it'll be enough. Well says, if you strike at the correct angle. here and stomp it out with them tender feet of yours. Now, what'd you do that for? That's all the water I had. When roughing it, accidents will happen. Oh, never mind about the water, old man. I'll get us some more. Now, where? There ain't no springs out here. And that, 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 that creek we crossed is miles back there. Nothing well is most explicit on the subject. Water can be found anywhere if you just know where to look. Well, look. where Leffingwell said to look, in the center of a hollow log. Oh, is that right? Uh, no, 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 thank you. Usually, 
Usually, uh, skunk water from a hollow log takes a mighty getting used to, but I see you took to it right away. Have some grub. Oh, no, no, thanks. I couldn't. When was the last time you ate? Well, I don't, don't exactly remember. But Leppingwell says that a man can go without food for weeks without any ill effect. It builds a man's stamina, fortitude, makes him strong. You, uh, never did say exactly why you was up here in these mountains. Oh, didn't I? Well, I have a purpose. A very important purpose. Are you a bounty hunter? <laughs> Hardly, old man. I've been called the high service. I know that. I'm absolutely sure of it. Destiny is beckoning to me. You got religion. <clears throat> Not like you mean. I'm gonna be somebody, someday. But I've been plagued with illnesses ever since I was a child. My father says that physical fitness is the key to success. So that's why I'm out here. To learn through hardship to build myself up, to be ready for those great years ahead. Well, you wander around these mountains by yourself for very long, and you're not going to have too many great years ahead of you. I'll just stay with you. It doesn't matter where you're going. The experience... Now, 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 wait. You may need the experience, but I don't. So tomorrow morning, you're heading downhill. You just follow right down this valley, keep the afternoon sun on your right, and in five days you come to a settlement and you can take stagecoach east. Your uh, fortitude will take care of you so you won't need any grub. Mm, got your skunk water so you won't get thirsty. Good night. Well, I woke up before daybreak, left him some food, and lit out of there. Tender feet, they, well, they make me nervous. I figured he could keep himself alive, at least till he got to a town somewhere. Besides, he had old Leffingwells along to help him out. <laughs> Where'd you all come from? Just what I need. An audience. Well, come on, fellas. How about a little help? Well, at least you didn't desert me. Come on over here. Well, I appreciate the thought. But I'm afraid I need a little more heft than that. Ben! Think you're big enough to handle this? Come on over here. I need a little muscle on this. Boy, I gotta get these logs over there. Okay, pull. That's a boy. Now, why didn't I think of this sooner? You can help build your own shelter. Hey! Ben! Hold it, Ben, no! If I thought you did that on purpose. Hello, the house. Anybody home? I've been walking so long, these moccasins feel like two frying pans sitting on a hot bar. What'd you do? Have an earthquake? Yeah, by the name of Ben. I'm building him a lean-to. He's been so used to sleeping in the house with me, and he just don't make a good roommate. Bunkin' with Ben would be a real pleasure compared to this fella I ran into a couple of days back. Stranger? As strange as they come. A real greenhorn kid, out in this country all by his lonesome, never been any further away from home in his mama's apron strings. Talk about your tender feet. He wanted to tag along, but I just pointed his nose towards home and hightailed it out of there. Funny little guy? Yeah. Wearing baggy pants? Yeah. Knee boots? Yeah. Has glasses? Yeah. Where did you see him? Right behind you. Oh, no. How do you do? 
My name is Roosevelt. Theodore Roosevelt. Snores, too. I couldn't hear him over the racket you was making last night. It reminded me of the sawmill at logging season. I don't snore. Us mountain men can't afford to snore. We live too dangerously. Incidentally, did I ever tell you about old one-eared Grogan? When it come to snoring, he was a regular one-man riverboat band. <laughs> one time, he was a blaring away thinking he was hit out in his bivouac and this old sheet type mountain lion comes along and thinking all that caterwauling was a heat type mountain lion she just jumps Bit right in his ear off and it is ear you heard that yeah yeah <laughs> incidentally i'm sorry about that jaybird following me in here at the camp oh well, it's no harm done did he tell you what he's doing out here anyway yeah something about proving himself uh, being a naturalist <laughs> and a bunch of funny talk about it being a man of destiny. Can you imagine that, a little runt tenderfoot like that? Well, it's hard to judge what's inside a man by the way he looks or by the way he acts. Well, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt, but if he looks foolish, acts foolish, and talks foolish, <laughs> you can be pretty darn sure he is foolish. Adams. Adams. friendly. Leastways he was. A little misunderstanding, Mr. Roosevelt. This is Nakoma, my blood brother. Nakoma? Teddy Roosevelt. Stranger, what were you doing? He attacked me with a bucket of water. Bucket of water? Huh? <laughs> Balahaja. Dear lick chick. Now I see what you've done. He says you're crazy and that you stink. And he's on his way home. Well, I didn't mean... I certainly didn't expect... It'll soon work itself out. Now, pitch in the hand, let's clean this mess up. It's hardly my fault, after all. How do you like that? It wasn't his fault, so now he doesn't want to help clean it up. I got a feeling Teddy Roosevelt never had to do much for himself. I think he's always had somebody to pick up after him. Poor little rich boy, all by himself. Not worth the powder it'd take to blow him up. D don't do that. Oh. Terribly sorry, old man. And don't call me old man. My name is Jack. The fellow doesn't like to be reminded. And besides, I ain't that old. Just a figure of speech, old man. Jack. Uh, what is that? Oh, that's a uh, Gertrude. She's a friend of Adam. Uh, appears she's taking a liking to you. Ooh. This should be. Interesting. That. Ah. 
you want something or do you plan to just make it a career following me around? I wanted to ask you something, old man. What? Well, now that I'm here, I'd like to uh, look around a bit, you know? Well, there's nothing stopping you. I wanted to uh, borrow your animal. My what? Your uh, burro. Oh, number seven? Uh, what for? To ride. Get around a bit better than on foot. Oh. You want to ride number seven? Righto! Well, if it's all right with number seven, it sure is all right with me. But I feel I better warn you, young man. I'm not sure that number seven is the riding type. Ah, oh, that's a mere bag of towel. Bag of what? I mean, I'm a splendid horseman. Ridden all my life. Master of the Oyster Bay fox hunt, you know. Number seven's right over there. You just help yourself. Thanks, old man. Say goodbye to your friend. <laughs> What's going on out here? Mr. Theodore Rosifelt is about to show us some of his splendid horsemanship. <laughs> on seven? Yeah. It's amazing the way some fellows will pick to commit suicide. We get all dressed up for the occasion to boot. Gentlemen? Well, didn't you warn him? Yeah, sure, I warned him. But he wouldn't listen. Didn't think he would. Like he told me. He's destined for high places, and he's about to go to one right now. What he's forgetting is that when you go up, you gotta come back down, too. <laughs> Whoa! Good try, Teddy. But not good enough. Oh, he ain't gonna try it again. I'm afraid Mr. Theodore was behind the barn door when they passed out the brains. <laughs> I sort of figured that number seven wouldn't take to be in road. <laughs> A bully try, huh? <laughs> it sure was, Teddy. You all right? Just fine. I'll just put this around here and tighten it up. It'll be fine. We get this lashed up. Good bow and bark covering. It'll be good. What do you think, Ben? like a pretty nice place to spend your nights, don't it? All handmade. I got the feeling he's not too impressed with it. He ain't slim with me no more. He's just gonna have to get used to the idea. Chasing Ben Franklin that away. 
Is that your bear? He thinks I'm his. Oh. <laughs> chasing a bear. You know, he wasn't chasing Ben. He thought Ben was on a rampage. He risked his life to warn us. Speak of the devil. I wanted to say goodbye. You don't mean you have to leave us. No, not exactly. Oh. I want to try it myself. What you've accomplished here in this valley, I'm very, very impressed. I want to do the same thing. Yeah. I'm sure I can succeed. I have quite a few ideas of my own. I'd like to wish you luck. He's gonna need it. Thank you. So that tenderfoot Theodore Roosevelt, he just marched right off into the hills, figuring to conquer the wilderness, I guess. Oh, hello. Hello. Wonderful how friendly the animals are. Gertrude, that's not very polite. Do anything rash. I wonder how Leffingwell recommends as we talk to a porcupine. Cautiously, I presume. Gertrude? Gertrude, where are you? This is a sticky situation. I wish I could tell you I was sorry to see you go. Oh. Ah. The selection of a permanent campsite is all important. Next is the construction of a sound, weatherproof shelter. Seems reasonable. First, choose a medium-sized sapling. Carefully notch it in the direction you wish it to fall and hew away. Well, there's a medium-sized sapling. It ought to fall that way. <clears throat> Carefully notch it in the direction you wish it to fall and hew away. Now, notching a tree to fall where you want it to fall ain't as easy as it might sound. First off, you gotta know what you're doing. Rosie felt could uh, chop a pretty handy lick all right, but it's where on the tree you do the chopping, not how good you do it, that counts. If you notch a tree on one side, the tree falls away from you. If you notch it on the other, it'll land right smack on top of you. Hew away. I guess it don't take a heap of figuring to know on which side of the tree Mr. Rosifelt made his notch. <gasps> Does it? I think that's sturdy enough. Not even number seven could pull that down. <laughs> Let's show it to Ben. Ben? There you go, Ben. Your new home. Pretty nice, huh? He don't seem too impressed with it. Well, just give him a little time. He'll get used to it. Come on, Ben. Go on in. Come on, Ben. Go on inside. He loves it. <laughs> <laughs>
No friends, no! <laughs> Well, Adams, I got to admit, when you're right, you're right. He just loved it. <laughs> he tore it. <laughs> That's Gertrude. <laughs> What's the matter, Gertrude? You upset? She sure does have her feathers in the ruffle. Probably got tired of hanging out with that four-eyed hoot owl. I don't think so, Jack. She's awful upset. Something must have happened to Theodore. Something happened to Theodore long before he attached himself to us. Come on, Jack, let's go. But Theodore said he could take care of himself. You're dumber than number seven. First you lose your home to a bear, now you lose your senses to a greenhorn. Well... I better go look after him. Will you slow down, Adam? I ain't got wings. We could walk, you know. Some greenhorn kid anyway. I don't think Leffingwell fully explained all aspects of the wilderness experience. I don't think. Stay calm. My foot's caught. Help! Help me! Help! Somebody! Help! Oh, look out! There's a rattlesnake! I'll handle him. Be careful. Easy now. I just gotta grab him right behind the head. Don't you move, Theodore. Got him! Well, nothing broken. That's good. Now, why don't you take your pack and your woodsman Bible and get on home before you get yourself killed or one of us? No. You don't understand. That tree falling on me was just a fluke. I've learned a lot since I've been on my own. Theodore, Jack's got a good point. It takes a long time to learn to survive in the wilderness. You can't expect it. I can too survive. And I'll prove it. I'll lead us back to your cabin by the shortest, safest route. Hmm. Hmm, he says. He's going the wrong way. I know it, but you gotta admire his determination. Come on, let's follow him. Are you crazy? He's going the wrong way. You know, sometimes number seven is easier to understand than you are. Now, how's come you to take an interest in a, in a, in a four-eyed, bow-legged tenderfoot like that? Well, you once took a shine to a clumsy, good-for-nothing tenderfoot. Yahoo! Me. Come on, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. There. Better all the time. Stronger, too. A regular Hercules. Are we getting close to home, Theodore? Ah, uh, yes. Very close. Um, this way. Have you seen enough determination yet? Come on. Gotta say one thing for you, Theodore. You sure know how to pick the hardest way to get somewhere. Here, I'll take Gertrude. Uh, Give me your hand. Hold on. There you go. Hang on, Gertrude. Uh, uh, Grab a hold of my hand, Teddy. Uh, 
That's it. Watch them loose. Oh, 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 oh. Well, there goes the trail down. What trail there was. This is great. Here we are on top of a gorge, and the only way down is to have wings or a thousand feet of good rope. You should have just let those rocks take me with them. There's something else I should tell you. I'm lost. I know that. You know that? Why didn't you say something? Because you had to find out for yourself. Let's go find ourselves a way out of this place. I've been in some pretty nasty predicaments in my time, but I usually don't need some green arm to help me get in them. Now, me and Adams was stuck on top of a mountain with a tenderfoot whose gumption was bigger than his brain. I don't mind telling you I've had better days. This was a bridge once. Not much of it left anymore. I doubt if it'd hold a man's weight. And that's a long ways down. No, wait. I don't weigh much. Teddy, no! Teddy! Theodore, you're crazy if you go out there. That bridge wouldn't hold a skinny fleet, much less a green kid with no brains. Now get back here! You know, I started to think you might have took on some sense back there when you figured out you was lost. But now I can see that you and number seven are probably the two of the dumbest critters on this earth. Uh. Hold on, Teddy. Nothing well never said anything about bridges. I guess I'm on my own. side just above it use that rock as a wedge you understand that'll be the day now maybe if your name was Leffingwell that's right Theodore that's an axe now get yourself to chop it notch it on this side that's right all right Well, eat your heart out.
one step at a time. Adams, I do know how to walk. Been doing it for years. Can I give you a hand? Jack? <laughs> Splendid. Splendid. That about does it, eh? Yeah. Now let's find a way out of here. Up this way would be my guess. Come on. Nicole was going to lead you back to town. I won't say goodbye. Because I'd like to come back again someday. But I will say thank you. All of you. For putting up with me. And my mistakes. Certainly made enough of them. Everybody makes mistakes, Teddy. But you realized yours. And you've got the courage and the determination to overcome those mistakes. Okay. I got the message. You got as much determination as Teddy. You can sleep in the cabin. But I get the bed. Oh. I've grown to love the wilderness. I think everybody should have the opportunity to experience nature the way I have. Right in the thick of it, you might say. Well... I've had a bully, bully time! So long, Teddy. So long, old... Jack. Eddie. Funny thing about Teddy... What's that, Adams? I got a good feeling about him. Theodore Rosefeld. You'll never mount to a hill of beans. Take my word for it. Deep inside the forest is a door into another land. Here is our life and home. We are staying here forever in the beauty of this place all alone. We keep on hoping, maybe there's a world where we don't have to run. And maybe there's a time we'll call our own place. 